In this video, we're going to be talking about the ear anatomy and its functions. So, when sound is produced, it creates a vibration within the air. This vibration, also known as sound waves, when entering into our ear, this flap over here is known as the pina. The pina is the one that regroups the sound waves and funnels them into the ear canal. The ear canal is a long tube that separates the pina and the eardrum. This over here would be the eardrum, and on the picture, this red part's the eardrum. The eardrum is a small, thin membrane that vibrates based on the sound waves that is, that is being um, filled in from the ear canal. It is also a separation point between the outer ear and the middle ear. So the eardrum is connected to the, to the three smallest bones in the human body, those being the auditory ossicles. A way you can remember these bones are through these tools that we have that being the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. If you're wondering what a stirrup is, whenever you're riding a horse, the places where you like put your feet on is called the stirrup. These three smallest bones basically amplify the vibrations or increase the vibrations so that in the next part, the cochlea is, a is able to produce these vibrations into electric charges. So the cochlea is filled with a liquid and, these, and it's also filled with thousands of hairs. Due to the vibration for, that the ossicles are amplifying, this causes the liquid to move. This in turn, and the hairs in turn, uh, turn these uh, vibrations or the mechanical energy into electrical energy. Later, these electrical impulses are then taken through the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve later comes into the brain and it reaches the temporal lobe as well as Wernicke's area. If you're wondering, the temporal lobe helps with auditory sensations and such as music, and Wernicke's area helps us in understanding speech patterns. This would be the pina, the little flap located here. This would be the ear canal, the tube that's us, uh, the tube that separates the pina and the eardrum. This red part would be the e eardrum, and the eardrum is this thin membrane that uh, follows in the vibrations that are located uh, through the sound waves outside. Due to the uh, vibrations of the eardrum, the auditory ossicles or the hammer, anvil, and stirrup start to amplify these vibrations so the liquids and hair in the cochlea can turn the vibrations or mechanical energy into the electrical impulses that we have. These electrical impulses are then connected to the, uh, to the auditory nerves and the auditory nerve then connects it to the temporal lobe or Wernicke's area. The Wernicke's area helps in understanding speech and the temporal nerve helps in auditory sensations such as music. This is a model, so this would represent the ear, the inner ear canal, the cell membrane, no, not the cell, the uh, eardrum or the thin membrane. Then this would be the hammer, the anvil, the stirrup or the ossicles. This would be the cochlea and this would be the auditory nerves. In conclusion, the ear is split into the outer ear, the middle ear and inner ear, with each part having many separate functions that allow us to interpret as well as process and adapt to the world that we know today.